Welcome to Shastrikara's astrological series. This is the part three and the conclusion for my presentation for the topic 2020 US day presidential elections. Uh, in this last conclusion part, part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the United States birth chart and do the analysis starting 16th June ending at on 16th November 2020. The reason I had taken is because Sun, transit Sun will be moving to Gemini, co-joining with transit Rahu somewhere around 15th or 16th of June. And by 16th November, I think transit Saturn leaves Libra where it is Nietzsche and enters Scorpio. So this in the last conclusion part three, I'll be concluding by conducting the United States chart analysis. So for the year 2020, uh, during the as per the sidereal ephemeris, there are some unique combinations that are going to happen starting 16th June 2020 and ending in 16th November 2020 and like the first combination that I am considering is transit sun co-joining with transit Rahu in Gemini so which you can see that it's the transit sun enters Gemini in somewhere in 16th or 17th of June and then it will stay there for 30 calendar days Transit Rahu is already residing in Gemini. So what you will see is that what will be the what will be the role what will be the role of the country uh, what will be the role for the country when Sat when Sun and Rahu are co-joined in Gemini. That's what I'm going to do the analysis for a given country. The second combination that I want to uh, do the analysis on the country's chart is uh, when <coughs> Sun transit Sun is in Cancer. We know that transit uh, Saturn is in Capricorn. That means transit Sun and transit Capricorn, sorry, transit Saturn are having a direct mutual aspect, and Saturn is in its own house, Capricorn. So we we need to sun is uh, uh, when you look at the country's chart sun is usually considered to be the leader so or the head of the country. So we need to what I'm trying to do is for a given country how would this during this period how would the country what what type of uh, changes or events is it possible during this period that's what I'm going to do the analysis. The next combination that I'm going to do a little bit analysis is when Sun is in Virgo. Virgo is a house owned by Venus and that's the place that means it is it just left its own house Leo and it is going to enter the house Libra where it's going to get debilitated. So Virgo is in between the own house and the debilitated house. So when Sun is in Virgo uh, for a given country is does is there anything that is possible to happen any event that is possible to happen is we have uh, is what I'm going to see and that's something that depends on country to country. This is the most important uh, the period that I want to do the transit analysis on for any country because Sun the leader is Nietzsche or debilitate, debilitated when Sun is debilitated uh, and the, that means the leader is becoming V is, is weak in general in the transit position so when you superimpose that transit planets onto the uh, country's chart what would be the impact? What type of events are possible is what I'm going to do the analysis on. If you see it, Sun enters Libra somewhere in October 2010, October 17th and go leaves, stays there all the way till 16th November 2020. 
and this presentation what I'm going to do is I'm going now that I had given the sidereal ephemeris the transition of the planet transit sun from one house to different house now I'm going to superimpose the transit sun Rahu Saturn and Jupiter all the four transit planets and the sea what would be the impact on the country's birth chart, United States country's birth chart. The very first thing that I want to see, the closest one is Sun, transit Sun moves from Taurus and enters Gemini uh, somewhere on say 15th or 16th of June. And so as soon as it enters Gemini, for the first thing is it co-joins with transit Rahu okay and now the transit Rahu and transit Sun are both in Gemini having a direct aspect on Sagittarius now when you superimpose when you superimpose the transit planets on the country's United States birth chart Gemini is the eighth house from Rashi Lagna and the fifth house from Chandra Lagna okay so now in Gemini for the United States on United States birth chart in Gemini it they have natal Mars natal Sun natal Venus and natal Mercury One, two, three, four. four important planets are already residing in Gemini that means from Chandra Lagna it is the fifth house from Rashi Lagna is the eighth house and that's where transit Sun and transit Rahu already transit Rahu is residing there creating all the mess that it is supposed to happen uh, those who are already have are uh, aware of the United situations in United States the sports and uh, entertainment industry got a major hit that is because from moon it is the fifth house the for a country the fifth house deals with the sports and entertainment the sport industry got they have lost millions of dollars no movies are getting re released in the from the Hollywood or no movie shootings are happening for the Hollywood movies so they have lost millions of dollars so you already saw the impact of Rahu being in the eighth house now what and then the from the Rash destiny I mean from Rash Lagna the destiny it's the eighth house and you have this largest eighth house deals with treasury and large scale losses it's already clearly visible the eighth uh, the treasury how bad it has impacted because of uh, the sport industry and uh, entertainment industry having an issue and now comes the large scale losses due to the coronavirus it's clearly visible what is the, how much large scale losses are happening all these are happening until 15th of 16th of June on 16th of June transit sun enters Gemini that is the eighth house from Raj Lagna and fifth house from Chandra Lagna this is what is very important here if you look at transit Sun sorry Sun Sun owns the tenth house uh, the tenth house in general is considered to be the administration or the leader administration in the Sun the government the government uh, employees or professionals who are running the country is called is the administration and the head of that administration is the leader now thus that deals with the 10th house now that transit sun is now co-joined with transit Rahu and that too in the 8th house where you have natal sun already residing there so during this and these people all these planets these four natal planets and true transit planets they all are having a direct aspect on the second house second house deals with revenue stock exchange banking and uh, trading between the countries and that's where you all already transit uh, sorry transit Jupiter is not going to be there till 29th of June so that means from 17th of June till 29th of June nothing great will, uh, nothing majority can be seen the impact but for after 29th June once transit Jupiter enters Sagittarius which is the second house then the impact due to transit Rahu and transit Sun entering the eighth house that, that impact whatever the negative impact is is going to be seen in the second house which is revenue stock exchange banking and trading after 29th June 2020 so as I said the eighth house is treasury and loss of uh, large-scale losses the second house is revenue 
and stock exchange banking trading all those things so and the 10th house is administration so we need to see from between 16th june till 16th july what are the these are the houses that are impacted so in reality what exactly is happening we need to wait and see somewhere uh, from 17th or 16th or 17th of July <coughs> transit sun enters cancer remember transit sun enters cancer somewhere in that period 16th 17th of July till 16th of August and yeah, when you superimpose it on the United States chart uh, natal Rahu and the eighth house Lord Mercury natal Mercury they both are residing in cancer so that means transit sun is going after leaving transit Rahu it is entering and co-joining with natal Rahu so there won't be any major difference between what happened uh, from 16th June to 16th July the same thing will be continued from 17th July till 16th of August but what is the difference is transit sun is having a direct is having a direct aspect on transit saturn there from when it enters the cancer because transit saturn is in its own house in capricorn so because of that saturn and sun having a direct aspect between mutual direct aspect and cancer being the ninth house lord sun is the 10th house lord and it has co-joined with the eighth house lord mercury uh, and so the major thing that is possible is the houses the major houses that gets impacted are the eighth house by default which is treasury and large scale losses the ninth house which is law and courts and dharmasthanamu and then the tenth house because uh, the tenth house deals with administration or administrators and the leader and the 10th house is because sun owns the heart and the house and it's going to uh, have transit sun is going to join natal rahu and natal mercury eighth house lord natal mercury in the ninth house and having a direct aspect on saturn the next period that needs to be analyzed or kept in um, watch to be watched is between 16th September and 16th October that means from 16th August till 16th September August that were 30 days transit sun will be in its own house so no major issues to worry about so I skipped that and then from 16th September till 16th October uh, what you are going to see is transit sun is going to be in Virgo and Virgo is the house uh, as I said earlier is the previous house is its own house Leo and the next house is Libra where it gets debilitated so transit sun residing in the Virgo is half active because the, it, it's loose it's going it's out of its own house and it's entering the house where uh, it's it's Nietzsche are debilitated here when superimposed on the country's chart transit sun is now co-joined with natal Saturn Remember when uh, transit sun was in cancer uh, between uh, 16th July 17th July till 16th of August it had a direct aspect with natal transit Saturn now 16th September till 16th October transit sun is going to be co-joined with natal Saturn and this is the one month period where Saturn and sun the, the bitter enemies are in the same house the previous 30 days ago they are even though they are having a direct mutual aspect but they are in different houses and from 16th September to 16th October they are going to be in the same house and this is the very crucial period for the country because from 16th September till 16th October when transit sun is going to be in uh, so co join with natal Saturn transit Jupiter is in the second house uh, which is the revenue for the country and it's having a direct aspect with uh, eighth house lot and in eight with the eighth house from Rashi Lagna and 
transit rahu is going to be there until 30th of september so the from 16th september till 30th of september is very very crucial for the country because of this combination transit jupiter in the second house having a direct aspect on the uh, what you call it the house and where natal jupiter is also residing natal sun is residing and transit rahu is going to stay there for another 15 days that is till end of september so the most important thing is what could happen here during that one month and then comes the most important period for this year 2020 that is from uh, 16th october till 16th november transit sun is going to be in libra where it gets nicha or debilitated and by the time transit sun comes to libra transit rahu leaves the 8th house from rash lagna and goes to the 7th house from rash lagna that means transit rahu is now going to have a direct aspect on the first house of the country and the transit sun is in the 12th house for the country and being debilitated and that's exactly during this period and transit saturn is now uh, in capricorn in its own house and uh, transit jupiter is still in the second house because it transit jupiter will be in the second house until 29th november so until 16th november 2020 transit jupiter is still in the second house having a direct aspect on the eighth house the most important house where you it has four important planets so this is the crucial period and exactly during this time is when we are going to have the elections so let's go and look at uh, <coughs> the person the candidate who won the election in 2016 president donald trump his chart and look at the transit planets on that day on the day he won that election if you look at it on 8th november 2016 we have a kala sarpa yoga or a dosha based upon the transit planets and for the candidate on 14th june 1946 when the candidate was born he was born under the influence of kala sarpa yoga or dosha so this tells you that the impact of the rahu the role of rahu how when the transit planets are in kala sarpa yoga how the rahu transit rahu is having a role on the candidate is clearly visible here another thing you can see here is that transit rahu on the election day when he had a kala sarpa yoga it is, and when you superimpose the transit rahu on the natus chart you see that transit rahu is on the first house on his lagna and mars natal mars the most malefic planet natal mars is residing there in lagna that's the very important thing that you have to see here and the lagnadipati is sun is already conjoined with natal sun already conjoined with natal rahu in his 10th house so with the natal rahu conjoining with the temple for lagnadipati sun and transit rahu re residing in the lagna the very first house and conjoined with mars the most uh, malefic planet it clearly tells you that the candidate that kala sarpa yoga on that day had amplified the ability for the candidate to win the elections and the, whatever the winning mode is whether it was it is through unconventional ways or a surprise or whatever that is the outcome is the nato will win the election this is exactly what happened on this day on 31st october 2016 uh, i posted my pres pres a small presentation uh, about doing the analysis for the election just one week from then onwards which is on 8th november 2016 and uh, i had gone through the birth charts of the then two presidential candidates uh, hillary clinton for democratic party and donald trump for the republican party superimposed their individual charts on the country's chart and then uh, super further superimposed the transit planets and finally uh, in that presentation that is 
to eight days before the actual elections had uh, i predicted that donald trump will be the candidate who will be winning the elections uh, here and that particular presentation is still available in youtube the link link you can see below and in that video if you go all the way to the 50 it's a 55 to 56 minutes video but if you want to know exactly what was my final conclusion go all the way to the 53rd minute and from 53rd minute till 56th minute if you listen to that three minutes uh, you will what you are seeing on the screen is what you will see there but there you can listen to my prediction final conclusion that uh, mr trump will be the candidate who is going to win the election in November 2016 and this I predicted on 31st October 2016. Let me uh, end this video presentation with the takeaway points. I have spent so much time in explaining in detail uh, the different astrological combinations, their impact the, and the transit planets impact on the country. Let me end the presentation with some takeaway points. <clears throat> the first and the foremost takeaway point here is for the country United States, the core revenue is only through two major planets. One is Jupiter. Jupiter deals with academic academics and research. And the second is Mercury. Mercury deals with exports of large goods. This is highly clearly visible for everyone who is, has seen how the country's uh, revenues are being earned this is clearly visible the, the second thing is uh, according to vimsotri mahadasa rahu Ma, uh, vimsotri dasa system rahu mahadasa started for the third time in july 2016 so anytime rahu mahadasa starts what usually happens for rahu in during the maha rahu mahadasa whether it is for the country or for a nato is that the lot of unexpected things Rahu will make it happen and Rahu shows that I can do what you couldn't ever expect to happen. So that is, it's always surprises. That's the reason why um, in one of my presentation when Rahu was in the sixth house for the country, sixth house deals will deals with the diseases and public health. Uh, I mentioned that uh, there will be some sort of a diseases that are unknown to the people or disease is known but they nobody knows how to cure the disease that's exactly the same way in the mahadasa also rahu is will be doing something that nobody has expected for example uh, after july 2016 the first presidential election happened was in november 2016 and no one expected that a businessman with no political background will become the president of this country. And it was a big shock to the whole country. Even the political pundits, nobody expected that to happen and it happened. So these type of shocks is what Rahu gives during his Mahadasa. The next thing is since Rahu, natal Rahu is in the sixth, is in the uh, uh, house where is the natal Rahu? Rahu decides how the country is to be ruled. And if you look at the natal Rahu, natal Rahu from Rashi Lagna is in the ninth house. Ninth house deals with law and order, law and courts, uh, sorry, law and courts or the Dharma Sthanamo. And usually Rahu is the one who decides how the courts has to behave, what type of uh, judgments will the court give or and what type of laws needs to be passed in the country. Since 2016, when the Rahu Mahadasa started, people who are residing in United States or who are monitoring the laws that have been passed in the country or the judgments that the court has given is most of them, I won't say all of them, most of them are so surprising that nobody has expected such type of things to happen. Just like the presidential election, the laws in the country have been, new laws have been uh, come up or the old uh, that has uh, shocked the people or the old laws were being uh, closed and which has shocked the people too. In the same way as the court decisions. And now it comes the, in November 2020, according to Vimsotari Dasa system, Rahu, it will be Rahu Mahadasa and Jupiter Antardasa. So, 
we have to see is where is natal jupiter natal jupiter is in the eighth house from rashi lagna and the fifth house from chandra lagna but since it is the natal jupiter we have to look from the rashi lagna which is rashi lagna tells you the destiny then we have to go back and see like uh, where is transit jupiter at the time of elections the elections is in november 2020 transit jupiter will be in the 11th house at the time of elections while the elections are going on it will be in the 11th house and from from natal moon and from the 11th house the natal from natal moon transit jupiter is having a direct aspect on natal jupiter natal sun natal mars and natal venus and transit rahu is in, will be in the fourth house so this is this is the takeaway point at this point so I've, now that i had given you the whole astrological um, definitions and explanations let me tell you in simple english what does that mean to the people to the country and the people residing in the country the conclusions first and the foremost is the results might get delayed the results in the sense the election results might get delayed and some there is a high possibility that even the result that got delayed might be decided either in the court or based upon some laws and interpreting some of the laws and then a decision has been made by interpretation of those laws and whatever it is it is going to create a big big shock just like 2016 november again in 2020 november this election results will give a big shock to the whole country and not just the country even though if i will not be surprised if it if it shocks the whole world and the most the last conclusion that i am trying to tell here is there is a extremely high possibility for the repetition of the election that happened in the year 2000 where the courts had come into picture and uh, declared who is the pre- who will be the president of the country uh, i hope uh, i try to explain to the best i can at least in that in this takeaway points in simple english and let me what in what i'm going to do in the next presentation there actually there are two more presentations to go in the next presentation part 2 i'm going to go backwards and see during the rahu mahadasa when in the first vimsottari dasa sist cycle rahu mahadasa uh, happened from 18 in 96 till 194 sorry the second one the first one happened from 1776 to 1796 and the second one happened from 1896 to 1914 exactly after 100 years rahu mahadasa came so during these two the first rahu mahadasa there were two elections in the second rahu mahadasa if i remember correctly there are four elections so i'm trying to analyze that during the rahu mahadasa on these elections day how did the election results come up was it did the election results surprise the people during that time or not once we analyze the data that is available and understand how rahu mahadasa and the transit rahu are having an impact on the election results in part 3 i'm going to predict uh, i'm going to say like who could be the possible candidate who can be the president of who can get elected as elected or selected i should say it as elected as 20% and selected as 80% in november 2020 thank you for watching this video finally let me tell you the take outs take away points from this part second part first and the foremost is because rahu has so much of influence in um, due to its uh, mahadasa just like rahu how he behaved in 2016 november even in 2020 november no one can expect what how rahu is going to behave that's the first and the foremost second since rahu is in the ninth house which is the dharmasthanamo and it has conjoined with the eighth house lord mercury how how the impact will be elections who gets elected or how, or the person who gets defeated how the person will behave nobody can tell anything 
about that because Rahu is the one there. What nobody has ever expected earlier, Rahu is going to do that. And third, since the reason why I was so emphasizing that about two points is because it's the Rahu Mahadasa and Jupiter Antardasa is, is minor, but Rahu Mahadasa. Jupiter Antardasa is the reason is Jupiter is in the eighth house from Rashi Lagna, co-joined with the Sun and Mars, the most important things. Mars is the first house lord and also Jupiter is the second house. Transit Jupiter is in the second house revenues having a direct aspect on natal Jupiter. So Jupiter had become much stronger here and to add further we here we are seeing the Jupiter under the side the time of elections. And the third impo fourth important point that I want to say here is Transit Mars uh, is having a direct aspect on natal Saturn and transit Saturn is having a direct aspect on natal Rahu and the 8th house Lord Mercury because of these uh, two co combinations the Rahu whatever he wants to do it, these two combinations will amplify whatever the Rahu's whatever Rahu is decided to do and make the whole world surprise it shock give a shock to the whole world so and there is a high possibility for uh, uncertainty uh, because of Rahu and just uh, to end this presentation these are just my predictions um, there's no guarantee that it's going to happen and I don't take the responsibility for even if anybody uses these predictions and come up with something I owed no responsibility for that these are just predictions to the best of my astrological knowledge thank you very much for watching this video let me start giving away the takeaway points from part three three the conclusion part three conclusion and here when you look at it when transit sun enters Gemini on 16th July and it will be there until 16th uh, July August from 16th June till 16th July transit Sun will be in Gemini from 16, 17th July till 16th August transit Sun will be in Cancer so those two that whole 60 days that means from 16th June till 16th of August transit Sun is going to have uh, contact with it will be co-joined either with transit Rahu or natal Rahu in the 60 days 30 days with the first 30 days with the transit Rahu the second 30 days is with the natal Rahu and in the first 30 days it's going to be the eighth house the second 30 days it's going to be the ninth house eighth house is uh, treasury and large scale losses for the country and from Chandra Lagna it is the fifth house so which is sports and uh, entertainment industry and the ninth house is Dharmasthanamo law courts and uh, decisions legal legislative decisions and that is from Rash Lagna ninth house and from Chandra Lagna it is the sixth house that is the Dushtas, Dushtana house which is the Rogasthanamo or uh, public health disasters so from 16th June till 16th of August because transit sun is going to be in these two houses the country you can expect some major events happening in the country pertaining to uh, public health, large scale losses, revenue, revenue loss and drop in the treasury, treasury, treasury side, the country's treasury and then all the way till September, 16th September that means from 16th August till 16th September the, it will be quiet no major issues but from six on from 16th September till uh, September October 16th October transit sun is going to co-join with natal Saturn that's another big messy period and then from 16th October till 16th November transit sun will be in debilitated in Nietzsche that's exactly when the elections is going to happen so the transit sun role will be almost zero are negligible by 16th of October and whatever the negative impacts that it, it can produce it will be producing 
for 90 days the first 60 days 16th june till 16th august the first 60 days and again from 16th september till 16th of september october disclaimer last updated may 29th 2020 interpretation and definitions interpretation the words of which the initial letter is capitalized have meanings defined under the following conditions the following definitions shall have the same meaning regardless of whether they appear in singular or in plural. Definitions For the purposes of this disclaimer, company, referred to as either the company, we, us or are in this cookies policy, refers to Sastri Kara Astrological Series. You means the individual accessing the service, or the company, or other legal entity on behalf of which such individual is accessing or using the service as applicable. Application means the software program provided by the company downloaded by you on any electronic device named Sastri Kara Astrological Series. Service refers to the application. Disclaimer. The information contained on the service is for general information purposes only. The company assumes no responsibility for errors or omissions in the contents of the service. In no event shall the company be liable for any special, direct, indirect, consequential, or incidental damages or any damages whatsoever, whether in an action of contract, negligence or other tort, arising out of or in connection with the use of the service or the contents of the service. The company reserves the right to make additions, deletions, or modifications to the contents on the service at any time without prior notice. This disclaimer has been created with the help of the disclaimer generator. The company does not warrant that the service is free of viruses or other harmful components. External Links Disclaimer The service may contain links to external websites that are not provided or maintained by or in any way affiliated with the company. Please note that the company does not guarantee the accuracy, relevance, timeliness, or completeness of any information on these external websites. Errors and omissions disclaimer. The information given by the service is for general guidance on matters of interest only. Even if the company takes every precaution to ensure that the content of the service is both current and accurate, errors can occur. Plus, given the changing nature of laws, rules and regulations, there may be delays, omissions or inaccuracies in the information contained on the service. The company is not responsible for any errors or omissions, or for the results obtained from the use of this information. Fair Use Disclaimer The company may use copyrighted material which has not always been specifically authorized by the copyright owner. The company is making such material available for criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, or research. The company believes this constitutes a fair use of any such copyrighted material as provided for in Section 107 of the United States Copyright Law. If you wish to use copyrighted material from the service for your own purposes that go beyond fair use, you must obtain permission from the copyright owner. Views Express Disclaimer The service may contain views and opinions which are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of any other author, agency, organization, employer or company, including the company. Comments published by users are their sole responsibility and the users will take full responsibility, liability and blame for any libel or litigation that results from something written in or as a direct result of something written in a comment. The company is not liable for any comment published by users and reserve the right to delete any comment for any reason whatsoever. No Responsibility Disclaimer the information on the service is provided with the understanding that the company is not herein engaged in rendering legal, accounting, tax, or other professional advice and services. As such, it should not be used as a substitute for consultation with professional accounting, tax, legal or other competent advisors. In no event shall the company or its suppliers be liable for any special, incidental, indirect, 
or consequential damages whatsoever arising out of or in connection with your access or use or inability to access or use the service. Use at your own risk disclaimer. All information in the service is provided as is, with no guarantee of completeness, accuracy, timeliness or of the results obtained from the use of this information, and without warranty of any kind, express or implied, including, but not limited to warranties of performance, merchantability and fitness for a particular purpose. The company will not be liable to you or anyone else for any decision made or action taken in reliance on the information given by the service or for any consequential, special or similar damages, even if advised of the possibility of such damages. Contact us. If you have any questions about this disclaimer, you can contact us, by email, jukra at gmail.com. Thank you for watching my three video, three press parts of this presentation. I hope I explained to you, to the best of my knowledge, how you can analyze a country's chart using the transit planets and how you can predict what are the possible events, what are which houses gets impacted, identify first the which houses gets impacted and based on the houses that gets impacted and looking at the uh, current situation, socio-economic and political situations, predict what are the possible things that can happen. Thank you very much.